Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship at Zion Lutheran Church. This morning we're going to hear all about our Good Shepherd who relentlessly chases after and seeks the lost. Let's join in worshiping by starting by singing our opening hymn, Just As I Am Without One Plea, Selected Stanzas. May God bless our worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us sing with joy to the Lord.
Lord, we pray that your mercy and grace may always go before and follow after us, that loving you with undivided hearts, we may be ready for every good and useful work. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first Bible lesson this morning comes from the Old Testament prophets, prophecies of Hosea chapter 3. The Lord gave his prophet Hosea an interesting assignment. He was called to marry an adulterous woman and remain faithful to her even as she was unfaithful to him. It was an object lesson that the Lord was using to show his faithfulness to unfaithful Israel and us. The Lord said to me, Go, show your love to your wife again, though she is loved by another man and is an adulteress. Love her as the Lord loves the Israelites, though they turn to other gods and love the sacred raisin cakes. So I bought her for 15 shekels of silver and about an omer and a lethic of barley. Then I told her, you are to live with me many days. You must not be a prostitute or be in intimate with any man and I will behave the same way toward you. For the Israelites will live many days without king or prince, without sacrifice or sacred stones, without ephod or household gods. Afterward, the Israelites will return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. They will come trembling to the Lord and to his blessings in the last days. This is the word of the Lord. Let's now join in singing our psalm of the day, God Be Merciful to Me. It's based on the words of Psalm 51.
Our second Bible lesson comes from the Apostle Paul's second letter to the Corinthians chapter 2. A member of the church in Corinth had been lost in sin, but through loving church discipline, he repented. So here Paul encourages the rest of the brothers and sisters in Corinth to welcome the repentant sinner back into their family. Paul writes, if anyone has caused grief, he has not so much grieved me as he has grieved all of you to some extent, not to put it too severely. The punishment inflicted on him by the majority is sufficient. Now instead, you ought to forgive and comfort him so that he will not be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. I urge you, therefore, to reaffirm your love for him. Another reason I wrote you was to see if you would stand the test and be obedient in everything. Anyone you forgive, I also forgive. And would I have forgiven, if there was anything to forgive, I have forgiven in the sight of Christ for your sake, in order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. This too is the word of the Lord. Now, in honor of the words and works of our Savior, please stand for today's gospel. The gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 15. Glory be to you, O Lord. These words of Jesus will also serve as the basis for today's sermon. Now, the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Our hymn of the day is How Deep the Father's Love for Us. Please note the vocalists will sing stanza one of that hymn. The congregation's invited to join in on stanzas two and three.
grace, mercy, and peace are yours through the one who has found you. Amen. It's lost. Again. Even though you try and put it in the same spot every night, you forgot. Maybe it was stuck in your pants pocket as you threw your pants into the laundry. Maybe as you sat down to watch your favorite TV show after work, it slipped out of your pocket and into the cushion. Or maybe worst case scenario, you left it in your car or at work, and now you need to find it. It's the most important thing on your to-do list. You have to get it done. See, in those moments where we lose something, whether it's a phone, wallet, keys, or a credit card, we need to find it. It's pure panic. Nobody likes to lose important things. And that includes Jesus. In our lesson for this morning, Jesus told two stories about just how important it is that he seeks after what's lost. Our first story today, for today was about a shepherd and some sheep. Now, sheep are ridiculed in the world of literature as being helpless, unintelligent creatures. They're quick to stray from their shepherd. They have no way of defending themselves. And in fact, if a sheep is tipped over on its back, it physically has no way of getting up on its own four feet on its own. It needs a shepherd. It wouldn't be all that surprising if a sheep were to walk up to a crystal clear lake of water to be startled by its own reflection. Sheep need a shepherd, and the people of Jesus' day would have absolutely known that. A certain shepherd had a hundred sheep, and as he was counting through all of the sheep, he was only coming up with 99. And so that shepherd had to make a very important decision. He could stay with these 99 and keep watch over them, or he could go and chase after that one lost sheep. Now we might think, yeah, stay with the 99. That's, that's much more important than one other sheep, right? Maybe it'll come back to the fold, and even if it doesn't, it's, it's just one sheep, right? These 99 have to be more important. But Jesus, our good shepherd, says the opposite. He says, of course, a good shepherd would go after that sheep, find it, put it on its own, his own shoulders, and bring it back to the fold. And we're pretty glad, we're pretty happy that Jesus found that lost sheep, aren't we? After all, this was a story about sheep, but it wasn't really about sheep, was it? Jesus wasn't sent into the world to find and save lost animals. He was sent into the world to find lost souls. Lost souls like you and like me. How often do we find ourselves straying from God? Straying from God's word? Sure, maybe we aren't labeled by society as the socially corrupt or immoral ones. But when we realize that God demands absolute perfection from our lives when we realize that really there's no difference in committing a hundred sins and committing ten sins, we realize just how often we're straying from God's word. Sure, maybe we aren't tax collectors, but have you ever been dishonest? Sure, maybe we aren't prostitutes, but have your eyes ever lingered longer than they should have? Sure, maybe we aren't professed heathens, but he, have you ever prioritized something over God's word? If we're being honest, we've strayed from God and his saving message more often than we'd like to admit. We've lost ourselves in the lies of this world. But Jesus, our good shepherd, doesn't forget about you. He doesn't just say, ah, well, maybe that person will find his way back to the flock. No, he actively goes and he seeks you. He saves you from the snarling wolf's mouth. He puts all of your sins on his own back and he carries you back to the fold. And he does this every single time you stray. 
It's amazing that our good shepherd didn't forget about you. He's found you. He's claimed you as his very own in baptism. He's seared you, sealed you as a member of his family. And he continues to provide for you by offering his own body and blood to wash away all of your sins. We have a wonderful good shepherd who has found us. And of course, we could never claim any of this for ourselves, right? That's why Jesus told this other story. He tells the story of a woman who lost a coin. And we're told that that woman looked everywhere for that coin. She was searching all over the place, sweeping under every couch, looking under every nightstand just to find that lost coin. What chance does a lost coin of, have of finding itself? There's no chance. There's absolutely none. That coin is, is lost, and the only way that it's found is if the owner takes it upon himself to go and find it. Well, Jesus, our good shepherd, has torn down every barrier that we try and put up. He tears down our sinful flesh that only wants to rebel against him, and he gives us a new heart, a new heart that wants to follow his commandments. And that's just an amazing blessing. Jesus has found you. And just because Jesus has found you doesn't mean that he isn't looking for others, too. And that's when we chime in and say, yes, of course, Vicar, you're right. Jesus wants everyone to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. That's right. Why then does it seem that we're so content with Jesus having us as one of his followers? See, it's easy to say Jesus died for the sins of the world, but it's much harder when we have to put faces to those people in the world. What about the people that we don't agree with very often? What about the people that we always argue with? What about those open sinners? Can we honestly say that we've eagerly sought those people alongside Jesus? The point of the stories that Jesus told today was to expose the lies that these Pharisees and teachers of the law were believing. The Pharisees said, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. See, Jesus told these stories to expose their self-righteous attitudes and show just how vast the love of God was. See, the Pharisees were jealous of Jesus' love. They, they thought that Jesus should be spending more time with them. Why would Jesus, the Messiah, be spending so much time with the rejects, the worst of the worst in society, these tax collectors and prostitutes and heathens, they thought maybe shouldn't he be spending more time with us? People who think more like Jesus did, people who have poured their whole lives into studying the scripture, shouldn't Jesus, the Messiah, the claimed Messiah, still be studying God's word with us? See, it's a pretty selfish and pharisaical thought, but it, it's one that can creep into our minds more often than we'd like to admit. Maybe we say, I don't want to associate with that person. Or that person is too stuck in their ways. Or that person is, is too much of an unbeliever. They're not, they're not good enough. But when, when did Jesus, our loving good shepherd, say, no, that person isn't good enough for me. He could have said it about you. Could have said it about me, but he didn't. He went out, he found you, and he called you home to, one of, to his flock. Why should he say that, those words about anybody else? See, when Jesus looks into the world, he sees lost souls. Sheep that are straying from him that need saving. When we look into the world, we can't help but see labels. Maybe it's just labels where we kind of fit people into certain categories. Something like African or Hispanic or American, Canadian, Republican, 
Democrat, liberal, conservative. See, those terms in your mind, they already separate those people into certain groups. Or maybe you identify people, you label them with a specific sin that they struggle with. Thief, murderer, homosexual, adulterer, abuser, alcoholic. See those labels? They tend to puff us up, make us feel superior to others, and as a result, our hearts for, for looking to save them, looking to show them God's saving message, well, it fades away, just like it did for the Pharisees. But let's not forget that the, label, the label that we had when Jesus found us. Our label was enemy, completely hostile to God and his word, completely separated from God. And yet Jesus came and he found you. When we realize just how often our minds are sinful and corrupt, we look to Jesus and see that he covers over all of our sin by perfectly seeking out others on his own. And now, Jesus wants you to join the search party. He wants you to be a member of, of his family that's, that's going out and seeking the lost right alongside him. And when we find one of those lost wandering sheep, it's a cause for joy and celebration. We read that, I tell you in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. There's no need to grumble or complain when somebody is welcomed into the fold. We have plenty of examples of that in scripture. Look at Jonah. Jonah was called to preach God's judgment to the Ninevites and when he finally did go, he pr preached that judgment and then he sat on top of a hill looking over the city expecting God to rain down fire and sulfur on this sinful city. But he didn't do that because our God is gracious and loving and those Ninevites had repented. Jonah was grumbling and complaining. He said, God, I knew you were merciful. I knew you were loving. And that's why I never wanted to come here in the first place. See, there's no need to be like Jonah. We can rejoice. We can celebrate just like the people in heaven. We rejoice when we see another sinner being welcomed into the fold, into the loving arms of Jesus. Finding a lost soul is so much more important than finding a lost wallet or keys or phone. And Jesus gives you the honor, privilege, and responsibility of seeking others alongside him. Amen. Now may this peace which transcends all understanding guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand as we confess the one true faith that saves using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Please note that if you have a physical offering today, you can place that in one of the baskets in the back uh, of the church. Otherwise, there is a place for electronic giving on the back page of your announcements. We'll continue with our prayer of the church followed by the Lord's Prayer. Lord and Savior, you have purchased us to be your own for all eternity. 
You have given purpose to our time in this life by making us your witnesses to lost sinners. And we thank you for the high privilege of working with you to gather your elect into your kingdom. As you looked with compassion on the lost sheep of Israel, grant that your Holy Spirit may move us to look with compassion on the lost of our day. Fill us with zeal to do all that we can to bring them the precious gospel so that they too may experience the joy of being your disciples. Enable us to be faithful witnesses to all whose lives we touch, whether it be in the privacy of our homes or in our communities. We thank you for missionaries and their families who are willing to live and work in distant lands. Keep them from harm of body and soul and give them joy in their difficult assignments. Above all, we ask you to bring those who hear the word to repentance and faith. Look with compassion on all people, especially those who are suffering. Give help and relief to all who are in need. And hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Although we have failed you again and again, we have learned to know you as a patient and merciful God. We ask you, therefore, to forgive us for the many times we have failed to share the message of your love with those who need it most. Renew us, restore us, and use us to proclaim your love by word and deed to all people near and far. May many more rejoice with us, and we with them, when together we stand before your throne of glory. We ask this in your most holy name, and it's in your name that we also join together to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Now join together in singing our closing hymn, He Will Hold Me Fast.
morning again, everyone. Thanks for being in the Lord's house today. It was great to be fed by our Good Shepherd's Word along with you. All the announcements that you need to know are printed in the back of the service folder on pages 10 and 11. Those will also be in the Electronic Zion update. It will help be helpful with any links that you see in there. I'll just highlight a couple things under the Bible study announcements there. We're starting a new Bible study series this morning, uh, right after first service here downstairs in the fellowship hall. It's called, Why is Life So Hard? And we'll be talking about bearing burdens in our burden-filled world. So please join us for that if you're able to. There'll be snacks and coffee downstairs, and we'll have a chance to fellowship. And then around 9.20 or so, we'll start that new Bible study series. We're also uh, restarting Sunday school for all the kids today. Uh, so that'll be happening uh, over in the school area while the adults are studying in the fellowship hall. Secondly, make note of the ladies' Bible study that's starting tomorrow evening. Uh, Debbie Bloomer's opening up her home for that. And there's a link to sign up for that uh, study if you haven't already. Uh, encourage all the ladies here to do that. I think that'll be a great opportunity to gather together uh, both for fellowship and for time around the word. Thanks again for being here today. Why don't you take this chance to say hello to those who worshiped alongside you today. 